So let's get started by looking at how to create a pop-up list of map numbers and balances using browses. Now I have a document open in the background. I'll just bring it to the foreground. Some of you may recall that the last time we looked at case view, we built a table and linked it to map numbers that were manually input in the first column, as you see here. This is a very functional design for creating a table layout in case view. However, it can be enhanced. It is likely that most staff do not know the map number listing by heart and would prefer to be able to just select a map number from a list of maps. And in case view, we refer to this type of list as a database browse. Now there are two ways to access the browse dialog from case view's design mode. Go view design mode. Browse may be accessed from a cell that has been designed and defined as a pop-up cell. So if I double click on cell BS1A2, it opens the edit cell dialog where I can set the cell properties on the general tab to pop-up cell and choose the pop-up item under properties. Now when the pop-up type is set to database, an edit browses button is available and this provides us access to the configure browses dialog. Now that's one way or canceling out of here and the cell properties, one may access the configure browses dialog directly from the menu items by selecting tools and browses, which takes us to the exact same configure browses dialog. Browses allow users to access working papers database information directly, now based on specific criteria. Once set up, the user can select from the browse using a pop-up cell or an event cell action. Browsers can also be used to allow the user to see supporting data when entering something into an input cell. Browsers are filtered listings of the working papers database. So creating browsers requires some knowledge of the working papers databases and a familiarity with using database filters. Now a full listing of working papers databases is available from within working papers. So if I just switch over to caseware working papers, we can select tools and repair file. Now hopefully everyone is familiar with the repair file operation in working papers, but if I click on the advanced button, all of the databases are listed with their abbreviations in brackets. The configure browses dialog uses the abbreviation to identify the database being accessed. So if I wanted information on my account mapping, for example, I would have the MP database to refer to in my browse dialog and we'll definitely look at that. Now for more information on the DBase filters, we would search DBase filters or filter example from working papers. Now, I happen to have that open in the other screen here so I'll just pop that open and this provides you with a variety of examples of database filters that could be utilized in formulating your specific browses. I'm actually not going to be using a filter in this case. So I'm just going to minimize that and let's return back to case view. Now, when entering filters in a browse, the database should always be identified. For example, the AM database is the account manager database. Since the same field name can be used in more than one database. For example, descriptions in our database are labeled by the field name AC underscore DESC, whether it's an account description, a leachie description, a map number description, they all use that same field label. Through the use of case view functions or a secondary database, users can view additional information not available in the primary database. So let's create a quick simple browse. I'll click on the add browse button and start to create a new browse that will provide me with a list of map numbers. Because I want a map number listing, I'm going to name this accordingly. I'll just call it map list. Now, as I mentioned when we were looking at the repair file dialog in the advanced tab, the database that I want to pull information for mapping is the MP database. And there's all of our abbreviations for the database codes. With that, the MP database holds not only map numbers, but also all of the groups from group 1, which is defaulted to lead sheet in case we're all the way through group 10. For my index, this provides me with some various options and in this case, I'm going to choose the ID and map number. It's a map number that I'm most interested in and I'm going to come back and talk about the ID momentarily. 
for the key, this provides an opportunity to tie the two databases together if I'm choosing a secondary database using a common field between the two databases. A secondary database would have to be selected in that situation. Now here, I don't need a key, so I'm going to leave that blank, and I'm going to leave the secondary database blank as well. We'll come back and add a filter to this browse to ensure we are only getting the information we want in a moment. And down at the bottom, the none label allows me to enter a blank field at the top of the list in the event that I don't want to choose anything from the available selection list. Now here I'm going to put in not applicable. Now notice I put this in quotes. Remember, whenever you see a three-dotted button at the end of a field, that is a calculation, so text must go in quotes. Similarly, whenever you see an equal sign at the beginning of the field, that is also a calculation field, and any text must go in quotes. Otherwise, the calculation takes on the syntax very similar to syntax that you would use in Excel when creating calculations. Now, we've got the basics, but we still need to add the fields that we want to see. To do this, I need to click the Edit Fields button. And then add a field for each column of information that I want to show in the browse. So I can start off with my first field. In the first field, what I'd like to put in here is my map number. So I'm going to label it map number. Now note that I could have pulled this from my client profile listing CLP 115, and it would have given me the same result in my title. The function, well, there's a calculation button here that I can click on and choose the function. This gives me a listing of all the field headings in the mapping database. So I want my map number to pull from that. And then I can set my column width. Now the column width defaults to the width of the map number field, which is currently 40 characters, which is a little bit too long for me. So I'm just going to set that down to 10. If we look at my map number, you can see that right now I'm actually seeing lead sheets. And if I scroll down, We'll see other groupings as well, and then we get into our map number. I don't want that extra information. I'll come back and filter that in a moment. The next field I want is going to be the name, the description of the group that's showing in the map number column. Again, I've got the function button that I can click on, and if you recall, I did mention AC underscore DESC is the field code for my descriptions. I click on that. We then see the descriptions of each of the groups that are listed. Now, when I'm selecting from a pop-up list, especially when I'm dealing with groups and accounts, I also want to see balances. I'm very interested in the balances related to these items. So what I'm going to do is once again click Add Field. Now, the first balance I want to see this time is current year balances. Now, the function field in the mapping database does not provide me with a field for a current year balance, so I have to create a calculation that will do that. Now, at this point, uh, I would expect a little bit of familiarity with the calculations within case view, and I'm going to use a linkage calculation for mapping called map. And then for my value, I want year zero, which is the current year, and the report balances. So BR for the report balances. Now, typically, we would then throw a map number into this calculation. However, if I hard code a map number, it's going to give me the exact same balance all the way down. So instead, what I'm going to do is put in the field code for map numbers. Now, caps and no caps doesn't matter. I tend to use caps in these calculations to make it easier to see when we're working with it. And that will give me my balances. Now, because I'm choosing map, of course, if it's a lead sheet, that's not going to have a map balance available to me. So that will show up as zeros. But as I scroll down, you can see that some of the map numbers do have balances, and the balance will show up here. And I like a comparative, so I'm going to add another field here, call it prior year. And I copied the function from the current year because they're virtually identical. I just need to change the YR0 to a YR1. And then, of course, we're starting map, prior year balance, report balance for the map number on the row that I'm currently looking at. And we get those balances. So that gives me the fields I want, but I'm still getting extra records that I don't need. So let's click OK here, because the filter in the Configure Browsers dialog is going to allow me to get rid of extra records. Now let me jump back to Edit Fields for a moment. Although I don't want this to be part of my browse, I'm going to add a field called the ID. And what we see here is behind, beside lead sheets, the ID shows a 1. If I scroll down beside map numbers, it shows a capital M. 
So I'm going to delete the ID field and go back to the filter and say, I only want map number, so ID must equal a capital M in brackets. Now, going back to my fields, I've also got a bunch of blank items at the top. So I can add another filter to this, again, clicking OK, and saying, and I don't want the map underscore number to be equal to nothing. So map underscore NO is not equal to a blank. Now, this will say error in calculation. That's okay. It's not really an error. And if I click on edit fields, if there were an error, I would be told at that point that there was an error. But now we're only looking at map numbers from the MP database where there is a map number associated with the record. And we've seen the description and the associated balance as well. Now, we could take this a step further and eliminate zero balances, etc. That would just be a matter of extending the filter calculation to eliminate those items that you don't want to see. I'm going to keep it simple like this and continue on from this. So let's we've seen the results looking at the preview, which is much better. And I'm going to accept this and click OK. This takes me back to the document and I like to apply the browse to the cells that I previously manually input the map numbers into. Okay, so if we go into the form mode here, that's manual input. But in the design mode, I'm going to select that entire column and select format cell. That's going to give me the ability on the general tab to change these to pop-up cells. And in the pop-up properties, I'm going to select database and a static choice here. Now, because I'm not using logic to choose my browse, I can choose a static choice. But if I had multiple browses that I wanted to determine which browse to use for this pop-up cell based on another selection in my file, I could use dynamic choice and write a conditional expression to provide the browse name that I want. Clicking on the choose a browse def uh, configuration drop-down, I have my map list browse listed there, and clicking OK applies that browse to all of those cells. Again, in the form mode, I now have the ability to click the drop down and choose the map number, which is going to then drive the balances into my current asset section of my financial statement that we see right here. Now, if we look, I didn't add any rounding to my calculations in the browse. So it's showing me the raw value in the database so we can see what the number was before it was rounded to the 224, 260 that we see in the document. And that is how we create and apply a simple browse to a cell within CaseView.